going live. All right, let's see. So you are up against Viper, yeah? I thought so, uh, but then Viper did not end up coming mid. All right, well, first let's discuss starting items. Yep. Let's see, what did you get? Uh -huh. Well, these days, these days Viper is being played, he just drops the puddle and tries to hit the creep, so he's not really a threat on until like le later levels, like 3, maybe 4, so there's no mm -hmm. reason to go with in instant salve and instant tangos, usually just branch tangos will do the job and get you a faster battle. So yeah, like because cool. because in, in Viper's uh, uh, puddle, like, I, my overlord, as a overlord is uh, disabled, right? So, and I take a lot of damage, so I thought I'll take some extra regen. Oh, it's Khan Kambi, not Viper. Yes, but but I thought it would be Viper. It, it should have been Viper, probably. Uh, well, yeah, but Khan, uh, it's the same. He, his cleave isn't really dangerous until later levels. So with these heroes, you can afford to just go with the usual branches and, and mantles. Alright, I can see that you are pulling already, that's that's really good. And while you're pulling, you should also maybe try... I'm not saying you're gonna be good at it, but uh, try to look at these moments. And Like right now, you can see there's two creeps getting low. And as you're mm -hmm. pulling, you're not doing any action. And what you could be doing right now is messing with either his farm by right-clicking this little creep in the middle. Can you see my cursor? Mm -hmm. It's moving. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Uh, yes. It's not moving right now, probably because you know paused. But I, I I can see the creep. Is the cursor moving? No. Oh, so you can't see my cursor. Well, okay, I'll I'll just I'll just narrate everything. So there's like creep in the middle, which is getting low. Yeah, I can see it. I yeah. can see it. So you have two options here as you're moving. The creeps are following you for the next two seconds, and these mm -hmm. two seconds you're free to do anything. You can last hit your own creep. You can. Uh, do some hits to the kunka, and you can uh, let, uh, try to deny the middle creep. And you did none of those, so those are missed actions, and your goal in the lane is to minimize as much missed actions as possible. Basically spend every second doing something productive. Like as you pull the creeps, you could have got like two hits into Konka. Remember, Konka is a melee hero, so mm -hmm. it's really easy for you to just casually drop some right clicks as you are pulling, because the creeps are already following you. You are moving away, and as you're moving away, you can always drop a, in a few right clicks. This 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 deals deals damage. This harasses the the Kunka, and it's against melee heroes. This is what you what you you should do most of the time. I see. And again, this has like been five seconds with nothing happening. You didn't uh, pull anything. You didn't right click anything. You just walked around in the lane. This is again wasted movement. Okay. What I would have done in this situation is just walk to the middle of the creep lane, creep wave, and drop maybe a remnant. As soon as Kunkka pours for last hits, this means he will either take damage or he will not be able to take the last hits. Especially in this case, since you have extra regeneration, you can just you can just go nuts with the right clicks because you can out sustain him at earlier levels. Hmm. All right. Like he, well, he also has some 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 sustain. But yeah, if both heroes have sustained, then you, sh you shouldn't be afraid to force his and use yours. Alright. This was good, yeah. He came close and he had to eat remnant. This teaches him that getting close is bad for him. Well, that's some missed last hits. Um, yeah. not, not gonna tell anything here, this, this just comes with practice. Yeah. And again, this has been 5 seconds without you pulling the creeps. And what this means is that Kanka can really conveniently just walk in the middle, in the low ground, with full vision of his own, and just approach and last hit. Your aim is to move the creeps into position favorable for you. 
So I try to pull as much as possible. Like this right here. This is this is the position favorable for you because as he approaches, yeah. he has to. He had no vision of what's going what's going on uphill more or less. You can always just plant a sneak remnant. He would walk up, maybe get hit, or just just use the uphill advantage to right click right click him a lot in this case. Okay. This is his mistake. That's really good. He came too close. He got a few hits. You dropped a remnant. That's really good. Uh, these types of plays is really good because uh, you recognize that Konka is vulnerable. You dropped the remnant, he took the damage. That was a good yeah. play. Okay. okay, what was the reason that you just walked around the area? Um, Let me rewind. Not sure. Your stream is actually uh, kind of very choppy right now. Um. Well, I've just rewinded it. You just like walked back and forth. It for no reason. I mean, well, I mean, why? Let's rewind again. See, so you took, took, you took the hit. Mm -hmm. And then just moved out. And allowed Kanka to get last, to get a deny. Hmm. Uh, that might have been like, I, I might have been thinking that Kanka might uh, plant a stun there. So... I was trying to avoid it. Probably. Okay, I mean, you, you do have the ward, so these movements should be unnecessary in the future. Okay. Okay. Now, in these moments, again, you need to train yourself to recognize these moments. You have four creeps. He has two creeps. Can you see mm -hmm. this on, on the screen? Yes. Yeah, I can. Yeah, you're level 3. If you have taken in Vortex at level 3, and in mm -hmm. this situation, what you could have done is quickly killed uh, this last remaining melee creep. And what you could have done is, as soon as Kunk approaches to last hit uh, your own low melee creep, you could actually Vortex him, hit with Overload, uh, drop Static Remnant, hit him again, and all this time, Four creeps, three creeps, would be hitting him as well. That's a lot of damage and even could have been a kill. Mm. So you should recognize creep advantage and whenever you see those moments, try to work with your creeps to deal a lot of harassment damage. Okay. Like you did exactly that. And he is now right now taking three creeps in his face. Mm -hmm. And he ate just ate a remnant. Now, if you had Vortex, he wouldn't be able to hit you, because he would be disabled, and you, yeah. you would have done around, I don't know, a hundred, maybe more damage in this case. Right. So, against uh, heroes, where, where you can usually easily utilize Vortex, like Kanka, uh, anyone else that is low range, like Monkey King, you should, as, as early as level 3, you should try to have Vortex for it. Okay, sure. I mean, based on based on the gameplay, I generally decide if I should if I get vortex or I get vortex at level four. But yeah, point taken. Yeah, well, this this was good because Konga still. He he didn't recognize that he is way. Disadvantages from the creeps, like you had your own three creeps. He had nothing hitting you, so yeah, he made a mistake. He paid for it. So that's good. Now, in these moments, uh, before you go out, you should see where the creeps are and see what's the enemy respawn time. Like, I bet that in this case, before you walked out, let's remind a little. Like, alright, you killed him. What's the respawn time? It's 10 seconds. Yes, is it enough time to kill the enemy range creep? I think so, yes. It absolutely is. And what you do, you have no competition and you're walking away. And then you remember you can last hit it and didn't make it in time. Okay, yep. So what you should have should have done in this case is like, 
gotten as close to the tower line as possible okay. and placed a remnant in such a way that it would hit the next okay. and the previous ranged okay. creep. So, okay. in this case, you would have secured two ranged creeps. Your lane would be still positioned at a good spot for you to go for, for the rune. Mm-hmm. And, and well, two range creeps is a lot of gold, is a lot of experience, and now you're walking away without securing those. Got it. Uh, one more thing. L- look at your items. It's uh, two minutes, you still haven't used a tango, you still haven't used healing self. So, usually it's, it's always good to have it and not need it, but in this case, if you would have skipped one of those, you would have gotten an earlier bottle, and right now, as you walk to the rune, you would already have three bottle use- uses and refilled it. Ah, uh, yes, but like, yeah, as you can see, like the other lane used the courier, so I, I was, I did not know that the courier would not be free. Generally, the courier uh, around the two minute mark, at least that's what I expected that they'll at least keep the courier free, but well, it did not turn it out to be that way. Alright, well, in this case, uh, and usually, in all the cases, especially at your MMR, it's it's okay to use the courier to get your stuff because people are inexperienced. They will they will use the courier for stuff like healing blade, or other garbage items. It's, it's, you just tell in the chat, my battle is coming. I need the courier. Thank you guys. Something like that. Okay. Always prioritize yourself uh, because your lane is at most times the at most priority. I think that is what happened. Uh, I recalled the courier and I think then they recalled it back or something. Yeah, so you just took all this walk, missed like five creeps all for nothing. This is inefficiency at its peak. When these moments occur, you always gotta ask yourself, where do I want to be? Where where can I take the farm? And, and you just took a walk without taking the rune and missed a lot of creeps. This is These moments shouldn't be happening. I actually wanted my bottle first, but then I when I realized it's not coming anytime soon, then I went back again. Do not expect, but... Adjust your play yeah. in real time. Like, if I don't have the courier, then don't go, don't go for the rune. Stay yeah. in the lane. Uh, again, you have you have the creep advantage, and you were walking around not doing. Let's let's rewind. This is kind of the the same scenario as last time. You three creeps hitting. Could be hitting Kunk right now. You do have your Vortex now, so that's good. Uh, even though he might seem like he has higher HP or high guard advantage, this is not the case. You can absolutely just walk with him to him, use the Vortex, do some da- do some damage. Mm-hmm. As soon as you see the creep advantage, you should o- you should always try to utilize it. Okay. Remind again. What you, I think what you did was yeah, I, I misclicked and and vortex. I think so. No, I think you over you placed the remnant manually. I mean voluntarily, like you wanted to place the remnant, or did you actually misclick? No, the remnant. Yes, the you remnant opened up with the remnant. Yeah. Do not open with the remnant because <clears throat> good good enemies will always see you coming, they know you will want to place Remnant and they can easily juke it out. This Kunk, of course, he hasn't probably seen but many storms, so it worked here, but uh, if you're approaching someone, always approach with Vortex first, because that way they will not run out. Okay. Why are you so far away? There is no reason for you to be so far away from your own wave in the lane. You're not dying. He he cannot kill you yet. So just keep the distance. If you if you need space, just pull the creeps to yourself. Do not 
Do not leave the mid lane area for no reason. All right. Okay, this is good. You, you pull the creeps back a little. Do you know why they stopped midway, the creeps? Um, uh, he also pulled at the same time? No. We walked high ground. Uh -huh. They lost aggro of you. They lost the vision. Okay. I see. And they instantly stopped. If you want to pull correctly into high ground uh, without losing vision, you, mm -hmm. you pull by being in the vicinity of your ranged creep, because ranged creep, as he attacks, he provides vision. Did okay. you get that? Yeah, Okay. I, I will remember that. And because he chose to walk through the side, they lost vision and they, they could not complete going to you. Okay. And that also means that uh, Omkar does not have ward over, like vision over me, high ground. Now, again, there was like five seconds of you, not five, three maybe, seconds. So you pull the creeps, you, they lose aggro, and what you do, it's one, two, three, four seconds of five, six seconds of you not doing anything. Could have clicked him, could have last hit, could have remnanted, but you just walked around. Now to understand what, uh, how to prevent walking around, I want you to tell me from your perspective what uh, what was your I don't know thinking process. Uh, what were you thinking to accomplish? Maybe you were spectating other lanes. Maybe you were thinking about items. Why were you not using your time doing stuff in the lane? I don't think I have a good answer. I mean, I. Generally tried uh, like previously I have been harassed by Kunka's cleave so I I had had this old habit of just moving trying to move away from from his attack range um, I think that's why I'm playing a little more defensively I I, I do note your point and I'll I'll keep keep that in mind next time so you just got overwhelmed by available yeah. options something like that yeah so, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that, that, that'll probably be fixed with, again, with practice. Okay. Alright, let's, uh, let's analyze this moment. Um, do you notice how it's minutes four, minute four and you still have three tangos? Uh, I, I think I was probably not paying uh, too much attention there. Against Kunk, uh, it's not that big of a deal because he doesn't have that much burst damage, but against mm -hmm. something like Lina... Clinks maybe, Huskard especially, you would be dead in this lane like three times already because you, you're not paying attention to your health. Like if you have tangos, there is no reason not to be at 75%, 80% of health. I'm not saying you should be 100 because you'll, you'll, you'll always be using battle and this will fill you up a little. But mm -hmm. you're just walking around with 30% health and still having three tangos. That's a no-no. Okay. I mean, I probably realized that uh, Kunka is making a lot of mistakes and I got too focused on taking advantage of that uh, over uh, regenerating my own health. Yeah, and if you had more health, this situation wouldn't be as risky. Like right now, I'm watching this and I'm not sure if he would ki will kill you or not. Uh, it's, it's a 50 for 50 percent. Uh, don't spoil yeah. this moment. I want to see it for myself. But if you would have used more tangos, you would have absolutely killed him in this case because again you have creep advantage and yeah. he's out of position and let's see how this plays out okay so you both got away with little health so yeah if you had been paying more attention to your health you could have walked in front of him blacked him a little uh, and it would, this would result in one more hit of remnant and he would be dead And again, they're standing just there doing nothing. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Why did you walk away from a lane where you're having full advantage? Look at this. You, you have high ground, you have more HP, you have almost full mana, and you're walking away. 
yeah probably just lured by the region rune what you should be doing well i think you know what you should be doing what, what do you think you should be doing probably push the wave first before going for the rune not only push the wave but walk to kanka hit him mm -hmm. twice use vortex hit him use remnant hit him not only did you push the way with just the cleave damage from your spells, Kanka would have lost around 400 HP. And then you would be free to go to region, get all of your mana back, and that's just, that's just instantly one lane. I think from now on I'm, I'm just gonna be asking you questions what you think you should be doing and then we'll see if you are seeing the moments but not being able to respond to it to them or just not seeing the moments uh, in this case kunk uh, was kind of a bit afraid he now sees that you have a lot of creeps he he wouldn't want to be near them so mm -hmm. as, as soon as you de-pushed you should be using your region maybe sooner Maybe later, because he wouldn't be able to interrupt them. Yeah. All right. Now, what's your what's your thought process? What do you think we should be doing? Mm, I mean, right now, looking at this, uh, maybe this is not the best time for me to stay next to the enemy tower, because Kunka is next to it. He can either stun me or do X marks the spot, um, and then I'll start getting the tower hits. But I should probably back off. Uh, maybe pull uh, like stack a stack a camp or something uh no Aren't and sure. no and no while okay. you are right that you shouldn't be at a tower for at this moment you are right for the wrong reasons if he was to try to kill you mm -hmm. uh the tower would not switch aggro because you wouldn't want to hit kanka back so what would happen is he would uh, he would try to cleave you he would x mark you he would taunt you while the tower would be still attacking creeps and as as long as you're not hitting him back the tower would not switch and you would walk away with like 200 health which is plenty of plenty of health for you to use regeneration so if you wanted you could you could easily uh, do like five to ten hits to the tower because the creeps are hitting him and as long as you're not touching kunkka the tower will not switch aggro. If Konka would engage, he would just wasted mana, he just wasted cooldowns, and you walk away, and you use regeneration, and and then the last 10 seconds has been a favorable trade for you. But, as, as, as I said, you are correct, you shouldn't be hitting the tower. Uh, what you should be doing right now is let the creeps hit his tower, and just go stack and clear some camps. You have region, you have much more resources to clear camps and come back to the lane full at level 6 and just kill him. Let's see. And you just missed denying the ranger's range creep. Do you, do you see these moments where Kanko uses cleave on melee creep and the range creep just sits, sits there with 100 HP waiting to be denied? Yes, now I do. Uh, versus Kanka, there's a lot of these moments once he levels Cleave at level 3, maybe level 4, I'm not sure how, how Kanka plays, but once he levels it enough, it's always like he's the Mother Creep and the Range Creep just sits there with, with, with a free deniable hit, and you should always anticipate these moments, because when you play against Kankas, all of them will do the same thing. I mean, maybe in Har MMR some Kankas will be smart and they will try to torrent the Creep first, so yeah. it's a full hit with the Cleave. But in this case, versus this Kanka, you, you could have denied a lot of creeps for him, from him. Okay. Okay, let's skip ahead. Alright, what was that remnant? Let's watch again. I mean, I did not have... Uh high ground vision, uh, so I did not want to get close by hitting it with right click. So I quickly made, I thought that I'll probably get it down to a lower health and quickly walk away. 
but you do have vision. You can see every single creep right now. I can see the creep, but I cannot see the enemy high ground. You do, not, you do not need to see the enemy ground, ground, high ground, because like we said, you have regen, you still have a lot of tangos, you shouldn't, you are not killable yet, so you shouldn't worry about Kunk at all. You have complete freedom in the wave, and when you have complete freedom, what you do is you approach the wave, and you time your hits in a way that all of the creeps die, but you didn't, what you did was, let's see, you forgot to right-click the melee creep. Yeah. Then you hit the range creep once. And tried and finished him off with remnant, which is good. Which is good. But what you forgot is that remnant will hit the melee creeps as well. And mess with your timings for the melee creep last hits. So, in this case what you should do is you first should wear down the melee creeps yourself. Or wait for your own creeps to wear them down and only then place a remnant, hit the creep, and then all three would nicely die at the same time, you would save mana, and you would get all of the resources back. Yeah, I, I'm, I pay attention to that when I get my remnant at uh, level 4, but yeah, point noted, I can also do the same at lower levels. Just need a different timing for it. One more thing, it's now approaching minute 6. Do you know what happens at minute 6? Uh, um, there's a new rune coming, so when there's a new yeah. rune coming, you should always try to use up your old one, because if you're if you're a storm, if you're sitting with a full, full bottle and you're not using your mana to harass, to last hit, to jungle, you're not, you're again not playing efficiently. So right now you're level 6, you still have regeneration, what you should do is just just uh, approach him, Vortex, Remnant, and zip out and use a regen. And once that what you do is just walk away. You have all of the advantage and you walk away. Again, call Kanka Cleaved. You can easily uh, uh, last, last hit the, la the, the creep. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. I understand he's he's now X marking you, so your mind switches to surviving this part. Let's see how this goes. Oh, that's a gang. Did you know? Did you see what happened? Did you see what you did? So when I uh, when I used my uh, ultimate to move away, I evaded his X marks this part. No, did you, did, did you see what happened with X mark? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Let's rewind. He X marked you, yeah. Yeah. And you accidentally zapped away. And I, I yes. really did X mark, right? Exactly. Yeah. And that, is that what you're talking about, right? Yes, you uh, you zipped yeah. away and he couldn't X mark because you will are, you were invulnerable. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not sure if this was intentional. This this, this was, was I mean I, I I I like I have been practicing uh, evading uh, projectiles with uh, my ultimate, and I noticed that Storm can do do that for a lot of projectiles. There are some exceptions. I, I tr just tried the same here. And yeah. yeah, so that was beautiful. Uh, since you know how it works, I'm, I'm not gonna well teach you how it works, but you should know that at levels uh, 12 and 18, you your ultimate just makes making you much faster. And yeah. Unless you have a bigger mana pool, it will be really difficult to pull off uh, this combo, like uh, ultimating out of his oh, Mr. Lasset, ultimating out of his. X mark. So, uh, in later levels, if you want to escape the X mark, you should always engage Conker with bigger mana pool. So, if you need to escape, or if you get caught, you just do a longer zip. Yeah. I'm not sure if this is making sense, but later it will. No, I, I can understand. All right. Cool. At later later levels, it's uh, it happens after a longer duration. I think four seconds. 
Okay, let's rewind here, and again, missed action. Let's see if we can see it. There you go. What should you do now? What should you do? Probably... Either pull a little, so that the creep uh, equilibrium is towards my favor. Do what? Sorry. Uh, change the uh, creep equilibrium, the lane equi equilibrium. Like pull, pull the creeps towards my lane a little. Um, no? at earlier levels, yes, but right now, you are. Uh, from level six onwards, the storm doesn't really care about equilibrium because now he has ultimate to play with, so. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter what. So what you did miss is again, Kanka is coming. He will want to last hit. What you do instantly is either place the remnant. If he is stupid enough to walk into it, I think he is. You should. Maybe you you would you did. I, I forgot. But in most cases, he approaches. What you do is instantly vortex. Hit with overload. Remnant hit with overload. And you can. I'm pretty sure you can finish him off with just. Your, your ultimate procs. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, he did, he did walk into Remnant. See, now if, if you opened with Vortex, he wouldn't find the time to use his Q on you, allowing okay. him to do to deal much more damage. Sure. Okay, I can see you panicked, and then you did, did it. All right, cool, beautiful. Yeah, low on health, low on mana, so probably going back to the base. Um, this is not the right play. You have well over fifty percent of of your health pool. Can Kanka kill you? I saw Bounty Hunter there, so I thought probably not the best time to stay in lane. Bounty is way under leveled, he cannot deal damage to you. Kanka just used his ultimate, he cannot deal damage to you. If they cannot deal damage to you, they cannot kill you. If they cannot kill you, you stay in the lane. Instead of even going even for... Even without mana? Well, instead of going for... Let's pause. Instead of going for regeneration, you bring the regeneration to yourself. The courier is in the base, you can easily get yourself a self, mm -hmm. two clarities, two mangoes. Uh, you will be full health, you would have more than half mana pool. Well, not maybe more than half, like two, three hundred for sure. And this, this would let you still stay in the lane and, and, and do sustains. So yeah, but this allowed you to go to the base and then teleport out. Let's see what's happening there. Yeah, this is the reason I wouldn't recommend going on Juggernaut first without confirming that he has or hasn't had ultimate. Like he he did use his spin. Which is good, this means he cannot he cannot escape or teleport. But he's still a juggernaut, he still has face boots and he can still run away really fast, so in this case not only didn't check if he has ultimate, but there was a perfectly good slow bounty available. Around your tower with vision, you could have jumped on instead. Oh. Or Jakiro, for that case. But yeah, you, you jumped, you got well, you got away and, and skates because he Jagdil did dealt no damage. But yeah, as you can see, if he would have stayed in the middle lane, brought some regeneration, you would still be last hitting, you would still have your mana. And what you did instead, you teleport the top, you did nothing. Yeah, I saw so that uh, our our carry is in the middle lane, so maybe I should not go there and divide the uh, experience and gold. 
I mean, I'm not not so. I mean, like I I don't know a lot of uh, variables to consider uh, in times like this. Like from what I've seen, storm generally goes either where there is like a, a lane is being uh, harassed a lot, or there's skill potential, or if there is no one in the lane. So I do not want to uh, mess up with the experience uh, for Luna. All right, let's let's continue watching. Well, we still did some get some creeps, so that's okay. Almost all the creeps. And now, because you've spent so much time wandering around, you you've just lost like two minutes of your farm yeah, time. Is, so, so this is exactly what I was talking about. That once the leaning stage is almost over, I sometimes feel lost. I'm not sure what to do. Uh, and that's where things start going south. Yeah, well, let's let's uh, talk back about your teleport top. Like, uh, was it really necessary? I mean, they were diving the tower, so the worst case scenario, they they kill one hero, and they take a lot of damage, and they have to go back. So their own trade off is they they gain nothing. They kill a hero for like 200, 300 gold, and then they have to retreat in, in, in case missing farm. So it's, it's not really a good trade for them. So unless the enemy is, is gaining a massive advantage from their uh, gangs, dives, tower takings, in that case it should help protect it. But in this case, this was their regular dive. So even in an unlikely scenario that they killed one hero, two heroes, they still wouldn't gain much, so it's not worth for you to go and defend it. So what you wanna do, if you if you're winning your lane, then just continue shooting on the enemy mid, uh, and stay there. Just establish your dominance, rotate through your your, your lane, the jungle camps. Yeah. If, if Luna comes, just kick her away. This is your lane. If she doesn't listen, just stay there. You can can always outlast hit her. This is this is like I said. This is lower MMR. They, people don't don't listen much. So just as long as you're the strongest person, they will most likely listen to you, look up to you. So just do the right place, and they will they will follow up. So in that case, uh, teleporting top was not a good man man management of your time. Should have stayed in the middle. Yeah. And right now, as as I have been talking, there was like two more minutes. You're just walking around doing nothing. Yeah, that it's the same thing. I like I mentioned, like I I am not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. It sometimes works out in some games. Like some games, it's easier to judge, but uh, I'm not sure about a lot of games. And there were no no. They, we did not have any vision uh, as such. So then I thought I'll probably start buying my own vision. Which is what I did right here. Yeah, that's a really good part. But if you're if you're buying your own vision, you still should you should still think uh, what's the best way to use that vision. Like you don't just walk and place the wards. No, you place the wards as you're farming. Uh, placing the wards shouldn't be your your quest. It should be your side quest as you're rotating through the uh, middle through the creep camps. And considering you have so much map control right now, you should you should either keep cool, keep killing Konka over and over again, or you should at least clear the creep wave really fast with with remnant or two and just just rotate the jungle. Right in this game, I haven't seen you doing actual private rotation to the jungle once. And as a result, it's 12 minutes. You have won your lane, and you still have only 43 last hits. Mm. This is how much you should be having on a one lane by minute five. And yeah, Luna came, and you, you're once again sitting there doing nothing. Well, okay, I've, I've talked about laning, I've talked about usage of time. 
I don't think there's anything else more to see in this particular game, so let's skip ahead see some team fights. Oh dear, a gank can happen you. Which is good, I mean, it's still space for your other lanes. Okay, good part is that you you got yourself some mangoes to re regain your mana. The bad part is that you still spend two minutes doing nothing. A bit sloppy, but you got there, so good. Alright, what's now you, you the enemy is pushing middle and you have no immediate mana points, so what what's your thought process right now? What what you what do you think we should be doing? And what are you actually doing? Uh, now that I'm seeing the replay, I we could have been pushing the tower together, and then probably after that go back and uh, get some mana back. Because we know two heroes are dead, uh, we can see other heroes in other lanes, so we could have pushed this tower together. Well, do your does your team need you? In the middle, no. they do not need you. Uh, yeah. Two heroes are dead, and the rest of the three are in the bottom lane. They do not need you. They can take the tower on their own. Yeah. So you are free to send yourself some more regeneration. Maybe take take the the uh, bounty runes. Maybe take a shrine. And it's good that you're making your way to the to the bottom lane because this should be your team's next objective. Def uh, taking middle and defending the bottom. But yeah, as I but can see. I, yeah, I, when I noticed that no one is coming, they probably either have their teleports on cooldown or they don't care. And I saw that bounty hunter is also there. I got tracked and I I left the lane. Yeah, that was a good thought process. Like you know that no one's helping you, so you shouldn't be there. But never waste teleport scrolls like this. You should only teleport home it's if if it's to escape something or reaching out lane quickly like this. Not only did you teleport away with no immediate danger, you, you could have just walked through the camps last hitting with your man instead of teleporting. And this would have gained you much more uh, stuff like gold experience. So mm -hmm. n never teleport if you could be doing something something more productive. Okay, let's keep ahead. Radiant structures be called upon. Radiant's bottom tower be under attack. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Radiant's middle tower be under attack. Where's the body? Okay, that was a good part. You, you, you saw a guy, you have all the advantage, you tried and went for the kill. That's good. Um, if you have no mana, then just stop immediately, do not chase, you're not going to get to magically gain some mana. Like, yeah. if you if you can see yourself no mana, then you cannot jump, just go somewhere else, find some region, uh, go do something productive. Like, there, there, there's, this is a, it's a thing I see with a lot of storms, like, they, they continue just walking and chasing, chasing the kill with no, when there is no reason to do so. Like, if you have no mana, Go get mana. Stop chasing. Yeah, exactly. Like here, Jug was actually pretty low, so I 
just thought of giving it a try but like when he uh, went past i stopped trying yeah good yeah what do you think your entire team team's goals should be at this moment uh probably securing the mid tower yes securing the mid tower so uh, and that's, that's I'm not sure how to put this. Uh, some things you can do, like Sven is farming a free lane at the top with no contest. You could ask Sven to help take the mid tower with him because he 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 can do that. He's farming. The, he's sitting in a place while he could be being in the middle. I mean, it's good that he's farming, but there are how do you say this higher priorities right now mm -hmm. so if your team doesn't listen then you should just be there yourself and just with the vision your team should naturally follow you uh, especially if you ask for help or, or be vocal about it so it's good it's it's it's, it's good that you're taking the shrine uh, but as soon as you do you should still be hanging around in the mid lane maybe not directly in the lane, but around it, like take some small camps to the left, to the right, but still be there in case in case opportunity arises to actually jump someone, kill someone, and this would open you open you the the tower. Oh. And that's exactly what you did. That's exactly what you did, really good. You read my mind. So yeah, in this case, unfortunate they. Uh... Whoa! What was that? That was sloppy. For disruptor, not you. All right, runes are spawning, so everyone has new objectives. Taking the runes. Oh, that's a kill! That's a kill! That's a kill! Good. So yeah, you are somewhere in the corner of the map while your team is trying to push the middle. So uh, what, what I'm saying is you should, you should be in the middle. Is that, not how it should, is that not how it should be? If, I mean, you can see two guys in the mid lane. They're, they're just standing there. Why are they standing there? Why are they not pushing? because they don't have enough resources, they are unsure. If he would come there, they would feel more powerful and things could start happening. Like you are fat, you are ahead. So use, use, this, use this advantage to be with your team, push with your team and take the tower. You don't want to be AFK farming. If 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 you being strong would open opportunities somewhere else. Why do you think Orchid is a good option here? Um. I thought, uh, so A, that would, if I jump on Jakiro or if I jump on Kunka, it would uh, disable them from casting their stuns. And even, even if uh, Bounty Hunter is visible, maybe he cannot go in invisible again. And uh, again, to stop Juggernaut casting his ultimate if, I, if someone jumps on him. <laughs> well, I'm gonna. And also, and, and I also thought that we were uh, probably ahead in at least the kills, so maybe I should get uh, an orchid. Because really? my team was actually not listening to me uh, a lot, uh, so I thought maybe I should 
get get it so i can uh, get more kills myself do you know what heroes like viper love to build uh rod of atos a uh, what uh, rod of atos yeah and what else what's the next item uh, not sure it's uh, griefs it's garden griefs okay what does it do yeah it, it uh, <clears throat> increases mana and in, uh, re like increases the health regen as well what's what does the active do the active yeah, is like mechanism is what it's like mechanism like it in, it, it uh, just increases the health regen whoa not, uh, you don't know your items man you don't know your items the active removes all the debuffs oh yes at that as well yes yeah, so that is the exactly the reason you shouldn't be rushing Orchid because by the time you have Orchid, the Viper will have Greaves, and all of your Orchids, in most likely, will just get removed. And, and that's that's the reason I would tell to most of the players, but to you especially because you are um, inexperienced in the farming patterns. This makes makes uh, your Orchid come really late. And if your orchid is coming late, then it's no longer good. The strength in orchid, if you if you get like, if you get it by 15 minutes while the laning phase is still happening, and you can get, just go to any any lane and, and take the pickoffs. But right now, as you can see, all the tier one towers from your team are taken down, which means the enemy will most likely walk in groups three, four, five. And you having Orchid means that if you jump someone, if you kill someone, you will most likely die because they will have backup. So, in this game, in the future games, I would say until you can hit good timings with your Orchid, just just, just just don't buy it. Try going Bloodstone Yules first instead. Okay. Because in this game, you free farmed, you had a free lane, but still your Orchid comes, comes out very late. Okay, that's a free kill. <laughs> Against the heroes, you should be jumping around much more. It would make it difficult for them to uh, freeze you. You can see here that I am timing my remnant so that all of the creeps die uh, at the same time, but yeah, I, I should do that at lower levels as well. Oh, yeah, good point, good point. Beautiful. That, that was really good. As a storm, you should always recognize when you can kill someone and kill someone. That's That's, that's nice. Well, again, you're walking around the camps, and your team is on their own, just took down the tower, and Luna died. If you would have been around your team, ready to join the fights, maybe Luna would have survived, maybe more of the enemy heroes would have died, and you would have gained, as a team, your team, you and you, would have gained more space, resources, gold, and just, well... I'm not. You get, you get what I'm saying. You should be mm -hmm. with. You should try to farm closely to your team, or with your team, so that when the fight breaks out, you're there to help. Like right now, it's good. You you, you was around their, uh, their 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 bottom tower. There was a fight. You helped. You killed. You took the tower. That's good. And now, for no reason whatsoever, you are going back to jungle. Well, you could be pushing so, with your team. You understand this? No, I, I do not. Like, I would, I would ask you, like, what should I be doing right now? So yeah, your team is continuing to push, and instead of being with your team, you just went to the furthest place imaginable to farm jungle camps. So that's 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 likely the worst thing you can do in this moment.
and you again you have more than half mana, you have mangoes, and you're running away somewhere with no real goal. Basically, your team, even with all the kills, all the space, your team is carrying you right now because they are actively taking objectives while you, even with the orchid, sit in the jungle. I also noticed that you you never check minimap. Like what you should be doing is you as you're farming the camps, you should be should be clicking here. Should be clicking here, seeing what the enemy is doing, seeing what Adams does does do they have. Checking out the oh he joined the fight. Okay, let's see. Oop, unfortunate. Yeah. So yeah, as I was saying, if, as as you're AFK farming the camps, you should at least be actively absorbing information of what is happening around the map. Items, towers, statuses. Like there, there, there has been so many free how do you say it, free space to take in these games, in this in this match, which was not utilized properly just by you not being there. Hmm. Right now your team is doing all, all, all the heavy lifting for you. So yeah, this is an another thing that concerns not only you but uh, other players that might watch this video. If if you're taking Orchid, you should be active with the Orchid. Orchid is is bought to basically pick off lone heroes on the map or be with your team and silence the key enemy players. What Orchid shouldn't be bought for is not for AFK farming the jungle. So. That's kind of a biggest mistake uh, for your mid game in, in, in this match. Like having Orchid and not using it. Okay, free kill, nice. And again, your team is doing stuff around their uh, their high ground, and you're just shamelessly walking back to the base. If you had some clarities on yourself, you could have easily just popped a clarity, and then farmed the enemy jungle while your team is pushing, and then not be returning to the base. So that that's part of your mana management. And like that is why I, I selected uh, to review this game with you because I felt uh, really sort of disconnected with my teammates and uh, lost during most of the match. What do you mean disconnected? Uh, so I'm not sure if you can read the chat messages or 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 not, but like whatever I was pinging towards, whatever I was communicating with them. They were not even bothered. You don't and... need to read their messages or understand their voice chat to to see what's happening on the map. You could mute them, and you could still know what they are doing and what their intentions are. Like you can easily see they are pushing. This means they want to take the tower. You this this makes no sense. You don't need to communicate to make plays. I mean, it's nice that you can, but in this case, you're ahead. 
you can easily team your, you can you can easily see your team going somewhere, and you can easily position yourself to be nearby in case they need you, or or just lead the fights. Well, for now, yeah, no, for nothing, nothing much is happening. There's your supports for some reason are awarding your own part of the map. Yeah, that's why, like this game, I placed uh, I think twelve wards and I think four or five sentry wards. Well, that's good. That's 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 what you should be doing in, in, in case no one does so. So good, good for you. Kudos. So yeah, I don't think we'll we'll learn anything from this part of the match. It's just. Uh, to summarize, you should just be farming areas more actively to the place where your team wants to push. But yeah, if, if your team wasn't so active taking down the towers and pushing, then you probably would have lost. Look at how much time you're spending in the base. As a storm, you got out farmed by profit, which is out of those five heroes, six heroes, which is the least, least how they say this, the hero that that farms the slowest. And this is all because you got orchid, and and wasn't utilizing it. It's either get orchid and do kills, or if you want to stay in jungle, then don't get orchid, get bloodstone. Oh, yeah, there was, I don't think there was anything interesting by then. Alright, question time, what do you still want to know? Uh, yeah, I, I mostly had my questions around uh, what I should be doing uh, after the laning stage. Um, and I, I think like you answered most of them. Like, if you build Orchid, uh, don't uh, solo jungle. If you uh, get, like get get bloodstone first, probably. Yeah, I think we can summarize this session as basically, uh, what's the key points? Do not build orchid if you're not planning to use it. Uh, what else? Always prioritize sending yourself regeneration instead of walking back to the base. You've spent a lot of time in the base this game. That's not efficient. Um, what else, what else? And yeah, I think the biggest factor was that you just refused to be with your team and, and play their own farming game in the jungle. And as a result, you have uh, 17 combined kills and assists, while the rest of your team has like numbers in the 20s. So yeah, anything else? Uh, nope. Alright, so yeah, for the homework, I think the same as before applies, focus on your last hitting. Your landing phase still needs a lot of, um, I wouldn't say work, but uh, recognizing on what moments can you do what thing. So yeah, get, uh, get your friends to uh, stand against you in the middle. That I think that helped. You, that your landing looked better than last time. And yeah, I think I will end this session right now.